Welcome back. And now for the news in detail. Prime Minister Imran Khan says Pakistan and the United States are on the same page regarding Afghanistan. Speaking at the International Media Council session in Davos, Khan said peace in Afghanistan can help boost regional trade. Khan said Pakistan's relations with the U.S. was no longer transactional. He went on to say that India did not cooperate with Pakistan after the Pulwama incident in occupied Kashmir. The Prime Minister added that he told U.S. President Donald Trump he is worried about Kashmir. He said India is trying to change the demography of occupied Kashmir. Pakistan's Foreign Minister Shah Mahmood Qureshi has urged the UK to play its role for the peaceful resolution of Kashmir dispute. The Foreign Minister briefed the British Foreign Secretary on Pakistan's role in Afghan peace process. Qureshi was speaking to British Foreign Secretary Dominic Robb over the phone. Rob appreciated Pakistan's efforts to defuse tensions in the Middle East. Quraish stressed on the importance of de-escalation and restraint in the Gulf region. Quraish also invited Foreign Secretary Rob to visit Pakistan at his earliest convenience. Meanwhile, Foreign Minister Shah Mahmood Qureshi says Islamabad's efforts for the resumption of talks between the US and the Taliban would lead to an Afghan peace deal. He was earlier exclusively talking to Indus News. Qureshi said Pakistan has also been counseling to stop violent attacks. Pakistan has facilitated the process. Uh, all expectations of Pakistan we were able to meet. Uh, we were asked to convince the Taliban to come to the negotiating table. Uh, we were able to convince them and they're on the negotiating table. Then uh, it was expected that the delegation so constituted should be authoritative enough. Now everybody recognizes that the delegation that was constituted to talk to them was authoritative uh, and, and to take decisions. The third the expectation was to get the two hostages released. Pakistan successfully negotiated the release of those two hostages. Uh, we've also been counseling the Taliban for a reduction in violence and they have now nodded uh, positively that they are willing to reduce uh, uh, violence. Hopefully, we expect, Pakistan expects that will lead to an agreement, an agreement leading to reduction in violence. He said Prime Minister Imran Khan discussed the grim human rights situation in Indian-occupied Kashmir with U.S. President Donald Trump. The Prime Minister uh, shared with him his concern with the uh, situation in Indian-occupied Jammu and Kashmir. The situation uh, was never good, but it has considerably deteriorated since the 5th of August. Uh, the were able to uh, discuss the uh, continuous uh, lockdown. Now it's entered its sixth month. The human rights violations that are taking place there, uh, uh, how the ordinary uh, citizens are being bad treated, how uh, the Indians are reacting to the uh, Citizen Amendment Act and the NRC and the protests all over India, the slump uh, in the Indian economy, the slowdown in the Indian economy, and all these three factors, the situation in Indian occupied Kashmir, they could undertake a false flag operation uh, in um, Jammu and Kashmir and blame Pakistan for it. Uh, that is a serious concern, and the Prime Minister shared that uh, with President Trump. The Taliban say a comprehensive ceasefire will be declared in Afghanistan after the peace deal is signed with the U.S. Washington and Taliban are currently holding a fresh round of talks in Qatar's capital city of Doha. In an interview, the group's spokesperson Suhail Shaheen said the negotiators are seeking to create a safe environment for the signing of a peace agreement. He said the Taliban will provide a safe passage to the U.S. and other foreign forces following the deal. Rejecting the media reports, the spokesperson said it is the first time the two sides are negotiating the possibility of a complete ceasefire. Hearing 144 petitions, the Indian Supreme Court has refused to stay the controversial Citizenship Act. The law has sparked countrywide protests as it is widely considered anti-Muslim and racist. 
In its interim verdict, the top court has granted the Modi government four weeks to respond to the petitions. The court also said a five-judge constitution bench will give an interim order on some of the petitions. The petitioners contend the new law is illegal and stands against the basics of the constitution. They argue that the law is against the right to equality as it will grant citizenship on the basis of religion. Meanwhile, nine student unions in northeastern universities have called for a total shutdown of institutions over the top court's decision. U.S. President Donald Trump has called the impeachment trial against him a hoax. Speaking before leaving the World Economic Forum in divorce, Trump says it is up to the U.S. Senate how it will proceed with the trial. The U.S. President defended his July phone call with the Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky that led to the impeachment trial. He said the story surrounding the phone call is phony and concocted. But he remained confident about a victory over the Democrats but said the trial was very bad for the U.S. He also said a WTO and European Union had been unfair and abusive in trade with the U.S. He said the EU was more difficult to do business with China. He said a progress was being made on a new trade deal with Europe, but didn't mention any date for the announcement of the deal. The U.S. president also said the plans on expanding the U.S. travel ban, but failed to mention which countries would be added to the list. Moving on, the U.S. says China's secrecy around its growing nuclear stockpiles is a serious threat to strategic stability. U.S. disarmament ambassador Robert Wood said China's atomic stocks will double over the next decade. Wood urged Beijing to join trilateral nuclear arms talks with Washington and Moscow. He said the U.S. had discussed the potential talks in a security meeting with Russia last week. Wood said it's imperative for global security that Chinese come to the negotiating table. Earlier, Russian Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov confirmed Moscow will take part in the trilateral talks. But he said Russia will not force China to change its current position. President Hassan Rouhani says Iran will never seek nuclear weapons with or without a deal. In a statement, the president called on the European powers to avoid Washington's mistake of violating the 2015 nuclear deal. He says the European powers will be responsible for the consequences of violating the pact. Tensions increased between the United States and Iran in 2018 when Washington withdrew from the nuclear accord and imposed sanctions on Tehran. In response, Iran rolled back on its commitments to the nuclear deal, but said it could reverse its steps away from the compliance if other signatories to the deal fulfilled their obligations. NATO chief Jens Stoltenberg says Turkey is crucial in the fight against ISIS. Speaking at the EU parliament, Stoltenberg said Ankara has suffered more terrorist attacks than any other NATO ally. He said Turkey is the only ally directly involved in the conflict since it borders Syria and Iraq. Acknowledging Ankara's role, Stoltenberg said the progress and achievements made by NATO in the fight would not have been possible without Turkey. Stoltenberg said NATO is also extending support to Operation Sophia in the Mediterranean to crack down on refugees smuggling routes. North Korea says it may be compelled to seek a new path after the US ignored a deadline for nuclear talks. Pyongyang said it no longer felt bound by its commitment, uh, which included a halt to nuclear testing and ballistic missile tests. The North's mission to the UN said the denuclearization of the Korean Peninsula will never be achieved if Washington's hostility continues. Jo Jong Chul accused the U.S. of applying the most brutal and inhumane sanctions at the UN-backed conference on disarmament. Chul criticized the U.S. for conducting joint military exercises with South Korea on the divided peninsula. U.S. disarmament ambassador Robert Wood voiced concern over Pyongyang's latest remarks. He said Washington hoped the North would return to the negotiating table. Iraqi Prime Minister Adil Abdul Mahdi says a fighting rockets at the U.S. Embassy in Baghdad is unacceptable regardless of the intentions. In a statement, Mahdi decried the authorities who allow attacks at the American Embassy in Iraq. Prime Minister said the attacks are incorrect and painful. Yesterday, three rockets landed near the U.S. Embassy in the Green Zone without causing casualties. 
No group has claimed the responsibility so far for the attack that came tensions rose between the U.S. and Iran. Israeli troops have shot dead three Palestinians near the Gaza border. According to reports, Gaza police say the civilians had no link to any militant group. But the Israeli army said the men were suspected militants as they tried to enter Israel under cover of stormy weather. It claimed the Palestinians threw an explosive at them. The fatalities are the first in cross-border fighting since last November when a two-day surge in violence left 34 Palestinians dead. According to the UN, Israeli forces killed over 100 Palestinians in Gaza last year and 24 in the occupied West Bank and East Jerusalem. In its latest sanctions on Venezuela, the U.S. has blacklisted 15 aircraft operated by the state-owned oil company. The U.S. Treasury Department says the aircraft are used to transport members of the Venezuelan government. In a statement, Secretary of State Mike Pompeo said these aircraft flew in an unsafe manner in proximity to the U.S. military aircraft in international airspace. Earlier, Pompeo had warned that Washington would take more action to support Venezuelan opposition leader Juan Guaido. After killing nine people and infecting 440 others in China, the mysterious and fatal new coronavirus has now been detected in the U.S. The Center for Disease Control said the virus was diagnosed in a U.S. resident who arrived in Seattle from China. More about the epidemic in this report. Worldwide efforts to control the new coronavirus outbreak have been intensified. Apart from China and the US, two cases have been identified in Thailand, one in Japan, one in South Korea, and one in Taiwan. Chinese health officials say the virus could mutate and spread further, confirming that it is spreading by human transmission. We will allocate the best medical resources and experts and integrate Chinese and Western medicines to minimize deaths. We will increase funding to ensure timely treatment uh, for the patients. We will also take care of medical staff, provide uh, adequate logistical support and arrange reasonable rest for them, especially their personal protection to prevent medical staff from being infected during treatment. Within China, the virus has spread to Beijing, Shanghai, Shenzhen, with Macau also reporting its first confirmed case. Meanwhile, North Korea has blocked foreign tourists crossing the border from China as a preventive measure. Coronavirus uh, 2019 is now a notifiable condition in New South Wales, which means that patients who uh, suspected of having that infection uh, must be notified by their doctor or laboratory or hospital to public health. Uh, under the Public Health Act, uh, if necessary, people can be uh, placed in isolation. WHO is holding an emergency meeting later today to determine whether to declare a global public health emergency. Well, so is to follow over right after a short break. Welcome back. The House of Lords has approved Boris Johnson's Brexit bill, but not before making changes to the legislation. It voted in favour of five amendments over two days of debate, leading the new government to its first parliamentary defeat. The upper chamber voted in favour of a move to protect the rights of European Union citizens in Britain after Brexit. The changes included backing the Dubs amendment to protect the rights of refugee children. The PM office said they were disappointed by the move, but planned to overturn them when the bill returned to the Commons. The amendments are expected to be voted down by MPs, likely due to the Conservative's strong majority in the House. This means the bill will bounce back between the two houses until both sides agree on the wording. The EU withdrawal bill ensures UK leaves the European Union on January 31st with a deal. 36 people are killed in a reported terrorist attack on two markets in San Matanga province of Burkina Faso. The government says three others were wounded after the militants raided Nagarago and Alamu villages. It said armed militants killed 32 civilians when they attacked and burned the market in Nagarago village. Later, they killed four more people in Alamu village. Hundreds of people have fled the area and taken refuge in the nearby city of Kaya. 
president has called for the two days of national mourning. It is not yet clear who is responsible for the attack. British rock star Ozzy Osbourne has revealed he has Parkinson's disease. Last year, the musician, who is famous for the heavy metal band Black Sabbath, postponed a world tour due to health issues. In a TV interview, the 71-year-old rock star told that he received the diagnosis in February 2019 after he fell at home and had to have the neck surgery. The musician says he has been working to recover to be able to perform in front of fans again. Osborne said he is now on medication for Parkinson's and nerve pain. I can die twice now. I've died once or twice before, but I mean, it's been a story of my life. When I came after quad bike a few years ago, my heart stopped twice on the way to the hospital. I've been, I've been, I must have just like a cat seven lives. I hope so. Like, like, it's been a great journey this year. This year has been amazing for us. South Korea's annual economic growth for 2019 has hit the lowest level since the financial crisis in 2009. Seoul's central bank says the GDP expanded only 2% annually amid sagging exports and global trade tensions. The bank said a net government contribution to growth came to 1.5%, the biggest portion since a decade, but said the government stimulus helped the economy post its fastest fourth quarter growth in more than two years. Stock markets across Europe are trading slightly higher after recovering from yesterday's losses. Investors are trading cautiously over fears of the spreading coronavirus that may impact major stocks. Frankfurt's DAX is trading about half a percent higher. London's FTSE 100 has gained a fraction after Berkeley stocks jumped 5% to a record high. CAC 40 in Paris is also trading fractionally higher. In Asia, Hong Kong's Hang Seng led the gains, closing over 1% higher. Seoul's Gospi gained over 1% after South Korea posted the fastest fourth quarter growth since 2017. The Shanghai Composite also posted modest gains as market sentiments turn mildly negative owing to the new coronavirus. Now the weather situation from around the globe. And that's all for now. For the latest updates, you can follow us on social media at Indus.news.